A nice thing that Spring Security provides for us is the ability to control which of our controller methods can be accessed based on the client that's sending the request and the identity of that client. So let's say that we have a controller like our video controller. So we have public class, and I'm going to call this video service again. And I'm going to leave out the annotations for, well, we'll go ahead and put the controller annotation here just so we remember it. But I'm going to leave out some of the other annotations. So let's say we have a method like upload. And this takes a video or some other information. And this is a sensitive operation. We don't want anyone to be able to upload video. If they upload something, we want to know their identity and be able to control who can upload and how much they can upload and other things based on the identity of the client that's sending the request. So let's say that we have a series of clients up here. And the first one is Bob. The second one is Alice. If we send a request from Bob, and it gets routed into this method, we want to do one thing. If an, a request comes in from Alice, we may want to do a separate thing. So for example, let's say that Alice is the administrator of this website. So Alice, we might want to have access to delete videos, for example, whereas Bob is just a normal user. So we don't want Bob to be able to delete videos necessarily, but maybe we want him to be able to upload. Alice, similarly, can be thought of as also being a user, um, but Alice is also an admin, so she can do more. So one of the things that Spring Security provides for us is this ability to associate roles with different users. So we can say this user is an admin and a user, whereas Bob is just a user. And then Spring will automatically go and look at rules that we provide based on who can invoke different methods based on their role. One of the things that we can do with Spring Security is we can add annotations like at preauthorize, and then we can add some assertion about the user that's accessing it. So we can say has role admin. And what Spring will do is it will check that the user that's associated with the client that is sending this request has the admin role associated with it. And if it does, it will go ahead and invoke the method. If, it, if that user does not have the admin role associated with it, then it will block the request and send back the appropriate HTTP response code like unauthorized or whatever the particular code is that you set it up for. So Spring Security gives you the ability to go and annotate your methods and provide assertions on the security so that not all clients can access a particular method. They can only access a method if they meet the security preconditions in the at preauthorize and other annotations that Spring Security provides. So in this case, anybody that tries to send a request to the, that would be routed to the upload method would have to have a admin role associated with their user account. They would also have to log in before they sent the request. If they sent the request and they weren't logged in, Spring Security is going to see at preauthorize. It's going to say, there's no session established with this client. I don't know the user account that's associated with this client and it would send the request back. It's not going to um, allow that request to continue. It's going to send back an HTTP response code that indicates that that was an unauthorized access and that probably redirect the client to the login page. So Spring Security can manage this idea of deciding which users should have access to which methods in your different controllers or your other resources that you create like REST-enabled repositories.